Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today we've got this Dell Precision 7530 on the table. Now, this will be a little bit about this particular workstation, but it's also going to be a video about how to read a Dell service tag, because that's a very quick way to identify what exactly make and model you may be looking at. Now, there's two things to keep in mind. Many manufacturers don't keep a comprehensive list of every single configuration in every single market in the world. So sometimes it's difficult to know what exactly your uh, unit may come with. So the service tag is one way that we can try and figure that out. And it's located on the bottom next to the barcode. And we'll look at that in just a second. The one thing that we do need to be mindful of, and this happened in a previous video, which I'll link over here, is that sometimes these bottom cases do get swapped out and the service tag on the bottom may not line up with the machine. So do keep that, this is not a guarantee, but it is a great place to start when you're trying to figure out a little bit more information about a Dell. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is actually look at the power supply because it gives us some clues as to what exactly we're dealing with. So this is the power supply. It's a 180 watt unit. Now, most modern laptops will use USB type C charging, but you can only get so much juice out of USB type C just because of the standard. Generally speaking, your USB type C chargers are 65 watts uh, with most manufacturers. Some will push it a little higher. Manufacturers like uh, Lenovo or Dell will use uh, more classic traditional connectors because they can drive more power to it. So we know we're dealing with a workstation class machine when we see this big honky boy. Let's go ahead and take a look at the service tag. And to do that, we'll put the machine underneath the document camera here. And the service tag is usually uh, right underneath the barcode. Uh, try to tilt that up so we can see in the light. And we also get a manufacturer year, which is 2019. So using these clues, and if we open up the device, we don't have any stickers on the palm rest. It looks like they've been removed because they did come with stickers. And I'll tell you how I know that in just a second. So what we can do with that information is we actually go to Dell's support website. We enter the actual service tag and then we can pull up information on the machine. Uh, primarily, it'll usually tell you that the system is out of warranty, uh, which we don't really care about. We know this is used. Now, the important thing is over here under the Quick Links section, we'll see something that says View Product Specs. Now, for a lot of people, this won't actually tell you a whole lot of very useful information about the specific device you may be looking to purchase. Um, so we're actually going to skip all the way down to the bottom because that's usually where the goods are. So they include all sorts of really weird things down here that aren't really um, applicable to the customer, like how it was packaged and how it was shipped, the box it came in. Uh, but now we start to get some clues as to what is actually included in the device. So we see a mention here of an Intel Core i7-8550H, which is six cores and that's a 45 watt CPU workstation grade, and it has uh, Intel integrated uh, graphics. So that's one thing that this will tell us. Scrolling up, we can see from the factory it had two sticks of 16 gigs of RAM for a total of 32, and this is DDR4 2666 megahertz. We have confirmation of the CPU up here, and then we see that there's no UPC label. It's not Energy Star qualified, so no Energy Star sticker. We see that a processor label was meant to be included, but is not included. Uh, it probably fell off. We can see that the screen is not very good. It's a, uh, it is a full HD uh, 1920 by 1080 panel, but it is only 45% color accurate, which is not that great. We can also see that it came from the factory with an M.2 uh, 512 gigabyte NVMe, which if these are being surplused by a company, chances are pretty good they're gonna remove those drives and the reseller might put in something different, but at least you know what it originally came with. And we see it's a six cell 97 watt hour battery with express charge, which means it'll just charge quick, uh, quickly. Interesting thing to note, the reason it's 97 watt hours is they want to keep it under 100 so you can use it with most airlines without checking the baggage. We can also see that this has been equipped with an NVIDIA Quadro 
uh, P1000 with four gigabytes of dedicated uh, GDDR5 memory. And we can see some other clues here as well. Uh, we can also see that it is equipped with a Qualcomm uh, dual band radio, uh, wireless adapter and Bluetooth. And that's the biggest pieces. We'll see that there's no uh, bracket of for the number uh, seven uh, hard disk drive caddy. We can see that it's shipped with a Windows 10 uh, Pro license that'll activate in English, French, or Spanish. And all of the other bits are kind of fluff. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can verify this information, but only if you have physical access uh, to the machine or you're able to talk to the seller uh, to give you some additional details to confirm it. One of the things that would be easy to do would be the BIOS screen. That'll tell you all sorts of information, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So we've talked about the specs that this machine uh, comes with, and we've got a couple of uh, unique ports and features here. So we do have the dedicated uh, track pad buttons at the bottom, which are pretty common on workstation machines of this era. They were very desirable to have a touch pad uh, that did not click. Uh, with uh, some of the work that people were doing on these, it was pretty much industry standard that they didn't uh, click. Now that has changed in the year 2024, but in 2019, this was pretty much part of the course. We also have a not track point, uh, precision point stick there. It's Dell's version of that. And if we uh, take a look at the ports and features, we've got two Thunderbolt ports over here, a card slot uh, for full size SD cards, and then a smart card reader is actually present on this unit. And then along the back, we've got HDMI, display port, and Ethernet, as well as the barrel plug for charging. And then over here, we've got the lock slot, two USB uh, 3.1, I believe, and then a headphone microphone combo jack, and nothing along the front. Now, to disassemble the machine is pretty straightforward. We just lie this thing on its back, and we spin out all of the... Uh, screws that are present on the bottom of the machine. So we have two in the front, two in the side, and these appear to be captive. We've got one right in the middle, which again is captive, and then we got two at the back for a total of seven screws that we need to uh, loosen up. And after that, we'll grab some pry tools here. And the easiest way in is usually around uh, these exhaust grates. So we're just going to slip our pry tool in. Help those clips let go. And there, that's easy. Okay, so let's slide this over under the document camera to get a better look at the internals. So uh, the internals here are the 97 watt hour standard rechargeable battery. We do have a WAN radio that is absent. So again, uh, that's really important to note. We do have our Wi-Fi card over here. This is where our uh, SIM would go for the Wi-Fi or the wireless radio. We've got uh, two M.2 uh, slots here for Optane or NVMe, so you can definitely RAID uh, these two drives. And we've got DIMM A and we've got DIMM C. Now that means this thing has four total RAM slots because there should be a DIMM B and a, a DIMM D. And I suspect that those are actually gonna be located underneath the keyboard. And it's also worth noting that they're hiding the other drive, the primary drive, over here. Um, you could easily miss that at a glance, and I wouldn't blame you. So they're obviously using space to the absolute maximum. Uh, so that is the primary uh, storage drive right there, and it's held in with that bracket and well protected. So let's see if we can get the keyboard deck off. And to do that, I'm just going to lightly put the cover on to protect the internals when we flip this over. And we've got two catches up here at the top of the keyboard deck. I'm just going to grab a smaller screwdriver here. And 
and I'm not a fan, <laughs> quite frankly, of these kind of uh, keyboard enclosures because they're obviously very uh, easily prone to damage. So we're just going to run this old credit card up the top. Being very careful not to damage the keys. And anywhere that we see resistance to flex, we're just going to help it up and out. And now that we've got that out, we just need to look at the bottom of the deck. We've got three screws along the bottom. Now you might ask, well, why would they uh, make this two separate pieces. I suspect that it's a cost reduction thing because then that way they can just build um, the different multilingual keyboards wherever uh, in whatever factories and they can snap the same bezels over. We're going to turn to back to the web page and we're going to look at the service manual and we want page 30 removing the keyboard. And it does come up and out, but it looks like the ribbon cables are actually located on the opposite side. Tricky, tricky. So that means that you need to remove the battery as well. Yikes. All right, now we have all of those ribbon cables there undone. There we go. Our keyboard comes out. There they are. Well, that's a pain in the butt. So here are our two 16 gigs uh, from the factory. You, you know, getting to the keyboard, you know, removing that I get. But you got this little cover, you got the keyboard, you got the battery, you got the lattice, you got the bottom case. I mean, you can do it all. Um, so I guess there's points there, but... Uh, it's not my favorite machine to take apart. A lot of pieces. I'm going to put all this back together. Alright, now that we got that mess of screws back together, let's go ahead and open this up and actually turn it on just to see what sort of experience we get. All right, very snappy machine, as you'd expect from 32 gigs of RAM. And it is the i7 uh, 8550H. We, we can confirm that. I hope you enjoyed the quick little tour of uh, service tags for Dell, service manuals for Dell, how this one has been put together. Uh, it's going out the door right away, uh, so that's probably all the testing that I'm going to do with it. Uh, obviously a pretty good unit, depending on whether or not you can get the price. And it is serviceable, but there's a lot of screws and a lot of pieces. So just keep that in mind if you are looking to pick up one of these for yourself. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.